Welcome back to JPL in 30. We kick off the final segment with our Monday doubleheader. First up, Western outfit Montego Bay United are on the hunt for crucial points as they chase the playoff. This time, Harborview FC stands in their way and three valuable points. Let's see how that one panned out. Easter Monday football here at the Anthony Spalling Sports Complex, Harborview versus Montego Bay United. Here's a starting lineup for Harborview. Perhaps uh, a lineup that we've become very accustomed to, Chris Taylor. Glen General Samuel, the Trinidadian in goal, order than Harding, Romain Brackenbridge, Garth Stewart, and the keyboard Jones, the back four. You see him free slid them on Rose and Joshua Anglin in the middle of the park, and Ruan Brownamar Thompson and Andre Fagan up top. They're coached by Ludlow Bernard. Here's Montego Bay United, William Ferreira in goal, the Brazilian. Josiah Trimmingham, Luca Lima Correa, Benaldo Wellington, Johan Weatherly, Jordan Fletcher, Odey Nish, Devaro McKenzie, Owen Gordon, Brian Brown, and John Claudio Ferreira. Their head coach is Nida De Santos. Tyron Robinson got things going early in this encounter. Ball played over the top. Glenroy Samuel, horror of horrors, outside of the area handling the ball, getting the yellow card. Uh, Wayne Gordon would step up. You'll see that in a short moment. And how did he step up? The wall was in position, but Glenroy Samuel certainly wasn't. And Owen Gordon made full use of the extra inch that he needed and converted it. That was the fourth minute. How of you? They would have some chances. Ruan Brown pushing forward, getting the shot off. That went wide. Montego Bay United, though, would continue to push the narrative and that flick on header. Korea couldn't just find the finish. That would have been an easy conversion had he just put the right foot forward. Literally, here they came again. Fletcher in the first half couldn't get the final touch after he really rounded the keeper. First half action again. Harborview through Harding lifting this one. Ruan Brown again. Unable to get it on target over the top. And Ferreira not being tested here. Ferran Brown again. Forcing a save from Ferreira. He was alert all afternoon. William Ferreira. Second half action now. Omar Thompson. Going across. Andre Fagan couldn't get to the end of this one. Beautiful build-up play. Correa to Weatherly. Bang on the target. His fourth for the season, Johan Weatherly. The second of the afternoon for Montego Bay United. And they made it safe with that conversion. Another look at it. Growing in confidence is Johan Weatherly. Harborview had a great opportunity. Chukwameka with the first header. Got Stewart with the follow-up. But on both occasions, the Brazilian goalkeeper was equal to the task. John Claudio Ferreira came forward, lifted that one in the area. Brand Brown should have done better. Glenroy Samuel shouldn't have given any glimpse of a follow-up chance. And here, another disastrous moment for Harbour View. Perhaps a soft penalty, but under the circumstances, not much to argue against. Opinions per perhaps will vary. Owen Gordon though converted with a plum and made it safe. Three goals for Montego Bay United. Yeah, this has been the story of the season, you know, but we, we know the disadvantage that we have, so we know we have to work with it. But of course, I thought that we could have responded more positively thereafter, you know, because the sustained pressure and the opportunities that we would have gotten would have brought us back in the game. And that is disappointing for me that we didn't have anything to show after all of that. You've managed many players. I don't know as a player how much time you'd have spent in the goal itself. But uh, talk to me what you think would be going through these players' minds. Because you, you've chipped and changed between three keepers this season. And yet the bloopers have still continued. Four, in fact, you're saying. Um, what, what is the kind of things you would say to the, these keepers in the tr on the training ground? Do you think it's just a lack of confidence? It could be right across the board. Um, there, are many, there are varying reasons that, that contributes towards the performances. Initially it was indiscipline, then you found lack of confidence, 
you know. And then, of course, sometimes the quality is just not good enough for this level and for the expectation of a club such as Harbour View, you know. So we get a mix back totally. But as I said before, going to the game knowing that we have this handicap, I mean, at 2-1, we could have probably come back, sorry, at 2-0, we could have come back 2-1, right? And with the impetus that we would have had at that time, we probably could have got something, you know? So we know what we have against us. We now know, we should now know how to find something up at the other end of the pitch, but that is also a problem. Big three points for you today. Analyze the performance for me. How, what do you think you did well and where do you think you need to brush upon? Of course, it was a good match overall. I mean, we still need to, I mean, finish off the opportunities in a better way. If we have done that, we could have closed the match in the first half. Uh, it's very important at that, at that point to play competitive not necessarily fancy football because sometimes fancy football you can you see lose the point and uh, it's not good so but the guys are doing very well i mean we could control the game uh, i think second half was a bit better than the first half and uh, the maturity of the guys even in the last 10 minutes knocking the ball around to get the time and choose the right moments to go we could have even scored more and I know you'll be very much aware of that. Of course, yourself and Waterhouse tied on points, but they have the superior goal difference. So I know sitting on the bench, you'll be saying to yourself, with all these chances, you'd want to take more of them because it could very well come down to goal difference and you'd want to close that gap. Look, I, I, never, I never had that, that, that hope. You, you, you see, the difference now, I don't even know how it is now, but it's, it's big and we cannot look. We came six here, goals. we came we, six goals now, but we scored three. <laughs> so you see, I mean, we, can, we could not come here to think about that. The second match of the doubleheader on Monday saw Clarendon Bay side Veer United looking to close out the season on a high as they take on relegated side Treasure Beach. Welcome back to the end of this morning sports complex for more Real Nathan Jamaica Premier League action. This encounter, Veer United versus Treasure Beach. In goal, Roger Williams, Alvin Strong, Lamar Neal, Javon Smith, Alric Maitland, Dan Clark, Nathaniel Howe, Donovan Clark, Dane Murray, Matt Lutwood, and Kamar Bush Beckford. Their head coach is Linville Dixon. Treasure Beach. Let's have a look on their lineup. In goal, Maui Morgan, Mario Bryan, Ryan Duar, Chinoy Smith, Jordan Nemhard, Tommy Lawrence, Tedla Parkman, Horton Wright. Lana Anderson, Tavar Thompson, and Xavier Lamont, their head coach, Fitzroy Ambersley. It started early for Treasure Beach. They had some great opportunities. Getting the opportunity here was Parchment. His shot was wide of the mark. Roger Williams not needing to make a save. After good work, poor clearance on this occasion. And he did well to get the ball. And his shot again into the advertiser's board. Very United had their moments. Nathaniel Howe perhaps with the best of the half. Moy Morgan equal to the task. Treasure Beach would continue to push forward. And that take from Romario Bryan, the shot like quality though. That was Tamar Thompson, beg your pardon. Second half action. Smith flashed that one wide. Not sure if it was a shot or a cross. Lewin doing well here to round the keeper, unable to find the finish into the side netting. That would have been a goal against his old team, Lorenzo Lewin. Good work to round Moy Morgan, but he couldn't get the angles right on the shot and it went into the side netting another great opportunity for parchment and my oh my did he spoil that one unbelievably in the end and that was the final whistle from carvel banton 
you said at the start of the game that you would have had you had a big meeting with your team, told them that you know coming into this match, important not to be complacent to defeat teams who are below you in the table. But it wasn't the same level of intensity like you showed against Portmore at the start. Yes, definitely so. Um, when we you, you, you summarize the game, when you summarize the game, uh, we start we start flat. You know, I can I I, I we really see that you know the team never start really the way they are to. Again, yes, I play a Treasure Beach team. Yes, as we said, you know, Treasure Beach dropped uh, at the uh, uh, out out of the out of the league. You know, but I know they they would have something to play for. You know, they're gonna play for their pride. That's again bragging rights because you know some of the Treasure Beach player used to play for Veer, you know, so definitely they would have put out everything, you know. So we really take uh, Treasure Beach for granted, you know. And today, you know, it wasn't it, it, it wasn't how we play the the port the the Portmore the Mount Pleasant, you know, in the last games and so on. But it's holiday, holiday, and it, it's very difficult to, to to drive that level of motivation to play, you know. And and today it, it really shows in the performance. Not necessarily the, the, the start you'd have been looking for, but con all things considered, a, a spirited performance from your boys. Yeah, man, definitely. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as, as um, Coach Linval said, it's, we're, we're, play, we're playing for, for pride. You know, we just want to finish the season strong and, you know, just, you know, just have some fun at the same time. Not necessarily after the start you'd have imagined initially, a, a, bit, a bit of a, a, a wobbly start in the um, pre-match and so on, but obviously from the start, the boys were switched on. Nemhard, the captain, marshalling things from the bat. And that yeah, must man. have been pleasing, considering, yes, you're coming to the end of your first Premier League season, but then football will continue after, and you want to make sure that you take these experiences to grow from them. Exactly, exactly. It's definitely a learning experience for us. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at keeping our core, our core, our core of players that, um, you know, exhibit the type of attitude and, um, you know, that's a culture that we want to create at, in Treasure, at Treasure Beach FC. And uh, we'll just move forward, you know, we get, we get relegated and we just have to brush ourselves off and, 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 and come again. Here's a full match week 25 results. Waterhouse beating Maline 3 0. Tivoli Gardens 4 1 over Lime Hall. Cavalier beating Dunby Hall in fourth goal to two. Mount Pleasant 1 0 over Humble Line. A tie 1 0 between Arnett and Portmore. Montego United. Making it very interesting going into the final match week. 3-0 winners over Harborview, keeping their top six hopes alive. And a nil all between Veer United and Treasure Beach. Here's the updated table after that fixture. Mount Pleasant and Tivoli Gardens in the automatic positions at the moment. Tivoli the same points as the Cavalier, but a superior goal difference of plus four. Portmore United, Iron Gardens and Waterhouse round of the top six. Waterhouse though and Montego Bay United on equal points with Waterhouse having six goals above them in the goal difference, 16 to nine. Of course, Treasure Beach and Lime Hall already relegated, 13 and seven points. And Dumpy Holland and Veer there and Humble Line running out of the top 10. The final regular season, Matric, Matric 26. Here's the lineup, Mount Pleasant and Lime Hall in the centre and Derby, Montague United and Tivoli Gardens, that would be big. Tivoli will want to secure their top two position, so they'll make it difficult for Montague United, who want to spring one on Waterhouse. Waterhouse face Harborview, Portmore, Humble Lion, Treasure Beach and Arnett Gardens, that will be a key battle for Arnett Gardens, they'll want to maximise points. Cavalier and Mullines United and Dunby Holden and Veer, those are the matches in Matrix 26. That's how we put a wrap on JPL in 30 on your home of Champions Sportsmax. Tune in next week for more JPL action.